So, what is finishing? Uh, like I just got into a little bit, layup would be one kind of finish. Most people talk about, you know, make your layups, but most players end up only really getting good at one kind of finish. You know, everybody starts with a game warm-up, kind of 45-degree angle, jog speed, normal standard layup. Coaches even talk about the wrong foot or doing it the wrong hand, doing it the wrong way if you do anything outside of that standard one type of layup. And so we try to use the word finishing to kind of look at a bigger, broader perspective. We want to have multiple different ways to finish around the basket, uh, layup being only one, you know, kind of the most basic version of that. So uh, we're going to give you a bunch of different ideas about how you can expand that universe of options, give you more tools in your toolkit when you're getting close to the basket. So what is finishing made of? Uh, we've got kind of a checklist that we try to perfect these seven pieces to make sure that you're getting really high quality finishes at the basket. One is getting the dribble timing with your feet, what we call our zero step, trying to get ball and foot together, making sure that we always have two strides after that last dribble with which we can maneuver, change direction, change speeds, get up, change all different kinds of dynamics using those final two steps into the finish. Um, and then third, the knee drive into the jump. Whenever we're getting up to shoot it, whether that be on a floater, it be on a reverse layup, it be on a standard layup, we're getting our knee on the same side as the hand that's finishing. Driving that knee up above our hip really helps us to get up higher, make sure we can get as much air under us as possible, get as close to the basket as possible. Number four is elbows to ears. Whenever we pick up the dribble on our way to the basket, we're usually going through traffic. There's a really high likelihood somebody's going to be trying to strip the ball down away from us on defense. And so we like to go elbows to ears, basically extending our arms above our head, getting that ball out of reach of the defense and doing that in rhythm with our stride so that we end up gathered back down at our chin when we go up to shoot. Uh, and then talking about which side of we're going to shoot from determines which side of our chin we want the ball in. So typically a right-handed player is going to hold the ball on the right side of the chin. Even when they're attacking at an angle that would make sense to do a left-hand finish, they just kind of have that habit of putting it on their right shoulder or right side of the chin. So we try to work on whichever side you're going to finish on, whichever hand you're going to finish on, finish with, use that side of your chin as your start point for the ball to release. And that really helps set up your motion, set up your shoulder angle, makes everything work a lot better. Uh, and then one of our defaults is what we call pizza pan, putting the ball on top of your shoulder like you're carrying a pizza tray uh, with your fingers pointed back towards your shoulder. Uh, it really allows the most simple motion for your hand to release the ball and make sure you have really consistent uh, touch when it comes off your hand. And then finally, the two finger push, just like we would work on with our jump shot when the ball rolls off our fingers, we like to use the two finger method, kind of thinking about two rails of a railroad track. We want the ball to roll evenly off those two and give it the most precise direction possible whenever we're finishing. 